Genesis uh, chapter 12, verse verses 1 to 5. The Lord has said to Abraham, to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show, show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless, I will, love, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. This is a good spot. So, the 
this is the case that I was facing. Even when I'm coming to Oman, after that I had to come to the church because I had the burden to come to my church. I'm that I passed it for 11 years. And then suddenly I felt the call of God, you have done everything that you have got to move on. And again, I was waiting upon God to go to Boston or to go to Singapore or to go to England or to come here. And finally, somehow God convinced me that this is the leading place, although many of them were unhappy that I was coming here, but I felt this is where I need to come. So when I came, again, I had to leave my church, the people who loved me so much, who cared for me so much, so for both of us rather, you know, there was nothing that we lacked. So many of them could not understand, why should they have to be? I said, I don't know. I somehow feel under the new pastor, the church will grow better. So God showed somebody, and I reappointed him, and then I moved out. So leaving is part of our Christian journey. Now, you have left your hometown, your home nation. You have relocated, like all of us. We are all expats, right? We are all expats. So, if you look at it, Jesus Christ also is not exempted from this, correct? His hometown is heaven, but he had to be. For your sake and for my sake, he had to be relocated. And so, Leaving starts as early as in the Bible, Genesis 2, 21, if you read. It says, when you are married, what a man has to do? Man must leave his father and mother. I don't know what is the culture in there. means, when you are married, you go to live uh, in your mother-in-law's place or your wife comes to your place. Separate. That's a message. Okay. So neither this side nor that side. But in India it is not like that. Normally girl goes to live with the uh, boys. Yeah, they will come. Even if they have to live in a place, of course they can. Otherwise, if the parents have to live in, the girl goes to uh, the boys' house. Uh, you know, so that is kind of situation. So, so I want to start with you about this relocation. The word leave comes very often. Please come to me to uh, Genesis 12 verse 1. Let me come to your words. What God told Abraham, what we read, go from your country. Poor fellow, he was sitting nicely. There was no problem, enjoy it. Suddenly God comes and says, leave. Leave your country, leave your people, leave your father's house, and uh, go to the place I will show you. Did God show him where he has to go? Today is going to be easy session, more than easy, so I want you to speak as well. Did God really tell where he is going to take it? No. So in case this evening, when you are sleeping tonight, when you are born, suddenly God says, leave this place, go to the place I will show you. How many of you will wait? I mean, if that could happen to me, if I have it, it happen to us, right? So let us put ourselves in Abraham's shoes. I mean, it's, it's not easy. But if you read Genesis 1 verse 4, it says, Abraham did what God had told him. Very simple. God said only leave, where to leave? But he left. No one can be born and father of faith. But he left. But leave. And not only that, Jacob also got home. And, and if you read Genesis 31, 13. Genesis 31, 13. God told Jacob, I am the God of Israel, where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. But now, Leave this land at once. I'm not giving you any time. Leave this land at once. Correct? And go back to your native land. Where was he living? You know, Jacob was living with his father. He worked. 
those days, if you want to marry a Jewish girl, you had to go to work in her father's field. Only then, the way you work, father will go whether you can take care of my daughter or not. That is a tradition. So he worked. And my father will achieve it. And then he realized his father in law was not the same, his brother in law was not the same. They were changed. And their attitude changed towards him. So as he was contemplating God says, leave this place, go to your place, and go. You know, it wasn't an easy decision even for him because he has to get a lot of money from his father in law. And he was wondering how both of his wife, Rachel and Leah, how both of them will react. Whether will they come with it? So he called for his wife and spoke to him. Look, your father is not the same towards me. He has changed the Lord, his attitude has changed. So I, I want to go. What about you? And both of them agreed to go with him. You know? So it is not easy, but yet he had to leave. What about Moses? You know, you read Exodus 33, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Leave this place. You and the people you brought up out of Egypt, go up to the land I promised to know. Leave this place. You see, Moses is leading him. Leave this place with where to leave. You know, in what context he said, Moses went up to a mountain to receive the commandments. By the time he came down, they felt he was taking longer time. And if you read the word, Moses did not say, I will be back in half an hour, or I will be back in one day. He did not say. Because he is going to receive from God. You don't know how long God will take. But these people were very impatient, people of Israel. So they called that. He said, You make a God for us. We will worship. And he took all the earrings, gold, everything, and he made a golden God. And what did they do? They worshiped him. They danced around. They offered sacrifices, burned out and everything. But here is a lesson for us. Where did they get such a lot of gold? You know, if you read Exodus 12, 31 onwards, Exodus 12, 31 onwards, if you read, the Egyptians urged the people of Israel, please leave this place. Otherwise, we will die. So you people go back to your home. And when the Egyptians said that, Moses started bargaining, go okay, we will leave. But you give your articles of silver and gold. You know? See, during that time, Pharaoh summoned Moses the dad and said, Up, oh, leave my people. You are Israel, like, go worship the Lord as you have requested. Because they felt if they are there, they will have to die. And then the bargain, verse 26. Take your blocks as you have said, go and also bless you, uh, bless me. 36, verse 36. Uh, the Lord had made the Egyptian favorably disposed towards the people. Because here, okay, now Moses is negotiating, we will go. But we want your silver and gold. The Lord caused Egyptian to be very generous towards the people of the land. And they gave a lot of silver and gold. They blended the Egyptian. That is how they got the gold. But when they were blessed with gold, it was a blessing. But the same resources were used to make a statue or a god or an idol, golden god. The same resources became a curse. By the people of God, God will bless you. But what determines whether it is a blessing or a curse? The way we use it. Now God may give you Ferrari. <laughs> but if you are going to be driving in 170, 180 kilometers of car, it will show you to be your curse. Correct? Now, this is what we need to be careful. All of us as parents, we want to be 
God by finding the legitimate. But that will destroy them. Don't forget. That will destroy them. It's very, very important that God bless them. God showed favor on the part of Egyptians so that they were very generous. Okay, take it. But they collected all the gold to dishonor God. Now God may give you a beautiful house. That house you are using only to have parties or you are using for the purpose of God. That will determine whether your house will become a curse or a blessing. So God will bless us with the resources. No doubt He is merciful. None of us are beggars. We have what we need. But how do we use God given resources? If you read Proverbs 10, he says, God will, when God gives you, blesses you, he will add no way. You know? So it's very, very important. But I'm sure how upset God must be. Look, I gave this people gold. But now what did they do? They made a golden cup and they have worship. They made a God of You know? That is why he told Moses, please take your people and go. You stiff make people. What he told Moses, I am not coming with you. See, although they did so much, God would have said, all of you are going to be failed. But God was still merciful. God wanted to give an opportunity. He told Moses, I am not going to come, I will send you a angel to you. Because if I come, I am so angry, I might destroy all of you on the way, so I don't want to come. Like this lady, one day he prayed. You know, she told the pastor, I don't want to pray for strength. Because if I get strength, I will give my effort. So that is it. No, she said, I, I don't want to pray for strength because if I had strength, I would give my so this is what God said. I'm so angry with you guys. Still think people, I don't want to come with you because if I travel with you, on the way I can kill you. Because so much they did. You know, I don't know how much that wife suffered for her to pray that. It's good that you're still friends. I mean, you're still lady, you know. So he told Moses, read this. And then if you read Joshua chapter 1, verse 2. Now my servant Moses is dead. Joshua, get ready. Leave. See, Joshua was sacred in command. He was comfortable, but God didn't allow him to say, Leave. Get ready to lead the people across the Jordan. You take them now. Leave. Are you people of God? This is what you and I read in Acts chapter 8, verse 1. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem and all ex except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. But you see, Acts chapter 8 was one. It's not coming. That's okay. Yeah, don't worry. On that day, what happened? Persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. Who were scattered? All the believers. Where they were scattered from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria. Now, we are all very much my dear people of God. If persecution breaks out for the BCO, for the FCI, if we are all scattered, chased out to the mountains, what you and I will do? Don't be spiritual, be honest. If we are all chased out from this place, suddenly one government descends, there is no place for you, what should we go, what should not have, you guys don't have a place. That was no time, scattered with what? Chased out, forced to. We all ran in the jungle, correct? What 
it is a Lord or a Lord. Can you please read Acts chapter 17, verse 26? Acts chapter 17, verse 26. From one man, he who he God made all the nations that they should inherit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed time. Please be carefully. God marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. It is applicable to you and me. For in this juncture in the history, that you and I would live in Sabala was already decided by God himself. God has appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. If you read in KJV, it says the boundaries of their dwellings. It is a God of record. You might have tried. Maybe it was not painted. But you and I must believe this. I am not here in Salada by us. It is the God of the You know, as children of God, this is very, very important. And the next verse goes here. And God, the word of God says, why did he did that? God did this. So the God, they would earn a lot of money. They would send it to the Philippines and man, build massive bubbles. Is that what you read there? No. You read that so that they will seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from anyone else. God went there so that you and I could seek him and find him, even in Salah. We may be minority. And the next verse, for in him. We live and move and have our being. In Him we move. We don't move alone. In Him we move. He makes us move. He causes us to move. So my dear friends, please understand. Remind us that you are living in Salah was already determined thousands of years ago. It is a God or a God. And God has brought you to Salah so that you will seek it. You will find it. And what you find will bring somebody to find it. Don't forget that. And what is the second reason that we learn about relocation? Relocation is not for personal prosperity, but for the purpose of God to be fulfilled. Yes, probably we are here. Because there is a possibility for you to earn more than another place. We are not denying that. But please understand that is not the primary purpose for those who consider themselves to be genuine believers. When God says, Leave the Philippines, go to Salah, and I have a place for you there, it is not primary reason for our relocation, it is not personal problem. Prosperity. It is not that we would become richer. It is not that we would accumulate more money. That might happen in the market, but the primary purpose is that the purpose of God will be. This is something we need to understand. If you look at all the things that I mentioned, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Jacob, all of them God said to me, not for their personal reason. God had a purpose for all of In the same way, He has a purpose for you and me. You know, it's very, very important. And as we read in Acts chapter 8, God scattered them. How could God do that? His own children, His own disciples. Those who believed in Him, God could have kept in Jerusalem itself. Why didn't He chase them to Judea, Samaria? God had a purpose for them. They would preach the word. The churches would be established. Now, let us imagine for a moment this handful of us. It is so painful to see only a handful in MCR. But even if this handful is not here, imagine this MCR would be here. God has a purpose. 
God has purpose for you to work. There may be many Filipinos who would not understand this, who is not part of the church. Maybe they are not part of any church. That is their problem. But you and I claim to know the Lord. You and I claim to follow the message disciple. So our perspective of life should be different. Maybe other Filipinos would say, I need more money to enjoy. Maybe to have a better retirement. But your purpose is that my purpose is not for personal prosperity. It is for the purpose of God to be for. So it is up to you. It's up to me. I need to ask him every day, Lord, why did you bring me to Salah? Why did you give me this video? What do you want me to do? It is up to me to pray out and ask this one. Because sometimes we think, if we continue to do that, for what I have to be here, you know, I will become poor. It is not. Can we read Genesis 13 verse 2? You know, God literally uprooted Abraham and he obeyed. Do you think that God left him like a beggar? No. Genesis chapter 3 verse 2. What it says? Abraham had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and in gold. God gave him. God blessed him materially. Just because God said leave this place, he did not become poor. But that is not the primary purpose. God would still be there, but that is not the primary purpose. Why am I saying this? God did not let him down. He blessed him materially. And he also blessed him spiritually. Genesis 21, verse 22. Why am I saying this? Like Abraham and you and I obey the voice of God and move on. As you know, as we have come here, as we understand the purpose of our relocation to Salala, God will do the same thing. And spiritually, Genesis 21 22. At that time, Abimelech and Fibo, the commander of the forces, said to Abraham, 